Eight years ago, I had outgrown the space that I was working in. I found a store that cost $200 more than the space that I had currently been using. It was a little bit difficult to get to even though it was only a $200 jump because unlike the space I had been using at the time, this space wanted a three-month security deposit and also required a little bit of remodeling in order to get it up to standards. The thing is, I ran out of money while I was first doing it. A lot of people said that I shouldn't do this until I had the right money to. I should wait until I have the money, but I'm not going to have the money until I move because I was unable to do work to the standard I needed to in the space that I was in. I should wait until I'm able to get a loan or something like that. And I just ignored him and I said, I'm going to find a way to make this work. And I did. The problem is that I ran out of money at the very end when it came time to put up a door. So I had about $55 left in my pocket. There was a door in the place originally, but it was really falling apart. It actually fell off the hinges. And when the door fell down, it broke into pieces. I can only imagine that door was almost as old as the building, which had gone up in 1911. So I went to a hardware store and I saw that the prices for those doors that have the glass from the top to the bottom were about $250 to $700, depending on how fancy schmancy I wanted it. And I only had 55 bucks in my pocket. So I asked to see some other doors and I wound up finding this $38 patio looking door like the type of door you'd expect on the side of a house in Staten Island or something and I bought it and they said you know you, you, this, this is not what you're supposed to get for a store and it's not going to work and I said you know really you mean like if I put hinges on this it's not going to screw into the wall over here like really you mean you mean it's not going to go and they said yeah it'll go but you shouldn't do it and there were other people I knew that thought this was ridiculous you're supposed to put this off until you can do everything properly and I ignored them all I put the you know I got that door on there and I started accepting customers some customers thought the place looked silly but I just made sure to keep the conversation on what mattered you know why are you here what made you leave the other repair shop you went to before here was it that they're slow because I've got I don't have to order parts I got everything for every machine in this box right here did they not want to do it in front of you because I'll let you watch the whole thing did they not want to give you an estimate for free because I'll let you know what's wrong with it and I'm not going to charge I made sure to put attention on my ability to solve their problem rather than allowing their attention to wander to the fact that the place looked a little bit silly and not like a store you'd expect to see in Manhattan and what happened well six months later I made enough money that I was able to afford this storefront that actually looked like a store and not like some shady place where somebody's going to rob you and it worked because When I moved to this place, I went from zero subscribers on YouTube to 980,000. I went from one employee to 13 employees. I went from 15 to $30,000 a month in gross revenue to 120 to 160 thousand dollars a month in gross revenue. I went from um, not being really good at board repair at all to becoming a virtuoso at it. I went from being in an industry where the standard was what Apple said is what 50 percent of the people that just walked into our store just blindly believed to now 99 percent of the people walking in our door think Apple's full of shit. And all of the change that occurred in my industry and and at my company, all of the stuff that happened over the past eight years, I kind of wonder, would that have happened if I had listened to the naysayers that said, you're not supposed to get a store if it's not fully functional from the beginning the way it's supposed to with a proper door and a proper storefront. You should wait until you're able to get proper financing to do all of this stuff. Now, I've been in business about well, like 10 years now. And as I mentioned in an earlier video, I still can't get financing from a uh, most of the, you know, standard institutions, unless I'm willing to go for these ridiculous loan, rubbish, loan sharkish kind of, you know, like those spam emails that you get where they offer you something and you call up and the interest is insane. And so if I, I'd still be waiting. There'd be no YouTube channel, probably. There'd be no board repair. There'd be no lessons on board repair. There'd be no change in the industry. And above all, there'd be no growth at my company. I wouldn't have went from one employee to 13. And one of the things that I, the two lessons actually that I think are important here, The first is so long as you're not lowering the quality of the actual service that you're offering to customers, don't don't care if you can't do things perfectly in, uh, on the first go. Don't care if your office isn't beautiful. Don't care if your website is a little table from Microsoft Word rather than some beautifully designed three to nine thousand dollar, you know, top of the line beautiful sexy website. Don't care if your office isn't beautiful. Don't care if you're doing most of the work yourself. Don't care if you're if you have a store door that looks like a patio door that makes customers go, what the heck is this? Because at the end of the day, it's better to do something. It's better to have a good business 
than to have no business. You're not going to have a perfect business in the beginning unless you were born, you know, born on third base on cloud nine with somebody else's money or just get really lucky. But what you can do is you can have a good business and a good business can eventually become a great business and a great business may be able to eventually become a near perfect business, but you're not going to start perfectly. And the second thing that I learned is the importance of savings during poverty. So one of the lessons I got there, you know, a lot of people that I that I meet that are in poverty or that are broke, one of the things that I've always found interesting was this inversion thing where the people that I've met that are really, really rich are very stingy. They don't spend money on shit. Whereas the people that I meet that are dead broke, they've always got the nicest shoes, the nicest car, the nicest sweater, the nicest phones, the nicest jewelry, the nicest everything. And part of the mindset that I realized for myself is, when so people have money, they have these large goals that they want to reach, and they don't want anything getting in the way of it. Whereas when people are broke, at least when I was broke, I would think, well, I'm never going to reach the goal that I want to reach. I'm never going to buy a house. I'm never going to be able to rent a store or anything like that. So if I worked eight or 10 hours today, then yeah, I might as well spend 20 or $30 on lunch out. I might as well get myself a nice, uh, you know, a nice treat or a nice piece of electronics or a new toy or something because it'll give me some joy in the here and now. And I'm never going to have joy later because I'm never going to be able to save up enough money or make enough money to actually afford this stuff. So I might as well enjoy myself now, at least, uh, you know, if, if I'm never going to have any money at all. And I, I had that mindset at times in the past, and I just kind of wonder how that would have went while I was building the store. Because when I finally found this opportunity where every last dollar mattered so that I would be able to put together an actual store and get the floor done and get you know everything going and be able to get a door in the front. If when every last dollar mattered like that, that where it could have made or broke make me or broke me, I was very, very happy that I had entered the mindset of saving every penny. I was very happy that I had the, the mindset of having cheap clothes because every single dollar mattered. That 38 bucks at that door that I bought at that hardware store and that 10 or 12 bucks I spent on the cab back, that left me with $5 that I was able to use to get some food. This was about early January by that time when the construction was finishing up. And this is a very slow, that was a, the slowest time of the year. So you know, it, it really mattered and it really made a difference. And I was able to open that next day when I probably wouldn't have uh, been able to open properly otherwise. And it, um, you know, it's hard to have a store when you don't have a door and it, it worked, you know? So the two lessons I learned there were just don't wait for things to be perfect. And, uh, you know, if, be willing to open your store with a patio door. That's a euphemism or an analogy for something in your business or something that you've been procrastinating on. Then by all means, go with it. Use it as inspiration. And be willing to put some money away because even if you're broke, even if you're putting away the tiniest bit of money, you never know when an idea is going to come up someday where every last fucking dime and dollar and penny that you saved is going to be a dime, dollar, or a penny that you're able to put towards the idea that you now have that you didn't have yesterday. And when that idea comes up, you're going to be really pissed if you spent that money on consumables and stuff that depreciates in value rather than on the things that really matter. I need to move again. I need to get a new space. Uh, I can't fit 13 people in the space now. I'm happy that we've went from one person to 13. I'm happy that we have 25 to 40 boxes coming in every day from all around the country. And one of the things that's kept me from moving is this idea that, well, you know, if I move, I don't have the money to do everything perfectly. I'm still at a point right now where financial institutions, besides those loan sharky like ones that, you know, randomly spam email you and have loan sharky interest rates, which I'm just never going to use, are, you know, I don't have the financing to do it properly. I don't have the financing to go through and rent a new space, pay the deposit, pay to have everything redone the way that I want it to be done. But you know what I could have if I moved, even if I don't do everything perfectly? space, space to actually take things in, space to not be stressed, space to hire another person if I need them to do a certain job that I need done. And I'm at that same point again where I'm telling myself you shouldn't move because you can't do it perfectly, but realistically, nothing was ever perfect. And if I went from one employee to 13, if I went from zero subscribers to 980,000, if I went from that pathetic paltry sum every month to the gross revenue that I have now. And if we went from an industry where virtually everybody just believed the Apple store car, regardless of what they said, to a world where everybody has that healthy skepticism, I sometimes kind of wonder, what could I do? 
If I'm not in a 650 square foot box where I don't even have proper ventilation because Hub will not allow me to put a mini split system in the bath in the in the backyard at when I'm paying for uh, this. Sorry, this is not supposed to become a video on how my management company or the building sucks. But what would it be like if we were actually in a space where everything fit? And the thing is, I can afford that. I can't afford perfection, but you know what I can afford? Space. And it's a lesson that. You know, I learned myself eight years ago, and I'm telling you, but I still got to remind myself of it because every now and then it's just easy to get into that, that mindset where things have to be perfect. And I think so many people are afraid of failure that they make excuses about why they can't do things perfectly and go, well, if I can't do it perfectly, I can't do it at all. Yeah, I just don't know everything about the licensing. And yeah, I'm not sure, you know, I have to make a website and I have to make business cards and I have to do this and I have to do that and I have to do, no. What you do is you put up an ad for what it is you claim you can do or find somebody who needs it, what it is you can offer, and you offer it, and you go from there. I'm not saying that you should cheap out and do garbage work where you're actually going to get people in trouble or lose their data or be liable for something but because you didn't do a good job. But if you have the ability to do a good job, don't worry about the fact that the space doesn't look perfect. Don't worry about the fact that other people may think that you're not a real business. And don't be worried about the fact that you may open with a place that has a patio door like this. That what I want you to think about is how six months later, if you're doing your job right, you'll have a space that looks like this. But you can't have a space that looks like this without starting from a space that looks like that. Unless you were born on third base or on cloud nine, in which case, God bless you. But what I hope you get out of this is the lesson that the, per the perfect is going to be the enemy of the good. And that you should shoot for the good. And there are people around you that are going to make you feel embarrassed, that they're going to make you feel stupid, silly, like a jackass. But all those people that made me feel like a jackass for the fact that I was opening one of the only stores in New York City that had a patio door, you know what they don't have? 13 employees. You know what they don't have? Almost a million subscribers. You know what they don't have? Even one-tenth of my gross revenue. So I don't care what they say because at the end of the day, they were making excuses, but their excuses that they were making for me as to why I shouldn't do something were actually excuses for themselves because they needed to believe that if you can't do something perfect, that you shouldn't do something at all because believing that is what allowed them to let themselves off the hook for the fact that they weren't doing with their life what they should have been doing with their life. And I don't think that you should let anybody who's not doing what they need to be doing with their life dictate to you how you should be living yours. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.